In this video we'll be looking at 14.1, congruent and similar figures. So our central question today will be, how do I identify congruent and similar figures. How do I identify congruent and similar figures? Well, congruent figures are figures that have the same size and shape. figures that have the same size and shape. Corresponding parts are matching sides and angles between the shapes. So for me when I'm talking about corresponding parts, it's much easier if I orientate the shapes in the same direction. So if I'm looking at this and I have A, B, C triangle, I want to put that right angle on that bottom left hand corner and then label my triangle. So if I turn this triangle to the right, if I like turn it counterclockwise and then redraw it, I'll be able to really see the corresponding parts. So I'm redrawing that triangle DEF and then I know D's in this corner and then if I go around in a clockwise motion I'll have D, E, F. So I know that's E and that's F. And now it really helps me see the corresponding parts because now they really match up. D, E corresponds to A, B. B, C corresponds to E, F. Angle C corresponds to angle F. So just by changing that orientation it's much easier to see which parts match up. So angle A is congruent to, well angle A would be congruent to angle D. So this filling this in is much easier now that I've changed that orientation. The measure of angle D, well if angle A is 90, then the measure of angle D is 90. Measure uh, angle B corresponds to angle E, so they are congruent. And the measure of angle E will be the same as angle B, so it is 48 degrees. And angle C corresponds to angle F, so the measure of angle F will be 42 degrees. Now we can do the same exercise with just the sides. If I'm looking at A to B, well that's the same as D to E. So I would say D, E, like so. And since they're congruent, they have to have the same length, so DE is equal to AB, so 3. BC corresponds to BC going down the diagonal, so BC corresponds to EF. And the length would be 5 for both. And then we have AC corresponds to DF, and that length is 4. So when shapes are, pro are proportional, we say that they have the same ratio. So we have to just review what proportional means because we're going to use this in our definition of similar figures. So similar figures have the same shape but not the same size.
and then we have corresponding sides so sides that match up corresponding sides are proportional and corresponding angles are congruent. So the angles for similar figures will be equal to one another. But what happens is I can s shrink the shape. I can shrink a shape and the angles stay the same, but the side length is what's changing. So a scale factor when dealing with similar figures is the ratio of corresponding sides. So how this works is we want to build a proportion using corresponding sides. So I can say this left hand side of, of rectangle A corresponds to that, to that uh, left hand side of rectangle B and corresponds to the left hand side of uh, rectangle C. And I can say the same thing but about the bottom sides all corresponding to one another. And then we set up um, a proportion with ratios of corresponding sides and see if they are equivalent. So what I mean by that, if I'm setting up a proportion for A to B, then I would say 3 to 2 is that equal to 6 to 6? These are not equal, so it is not so they are not similar figures. Now I can go A to C. So let's look at A to C. And I would go 3 to 2. Is that proportional to 6 to 4? Well they are. These are equivalent fractions. So I could say yes, and these are similar. A is similar to C because they have that equivalent uh, proportion. The proportion is, is true. Okay, so let's use this idea and see if we can solve some problems in solving for x. So we can set up this ratio and then use our cross multiply um, to solve for x. So we'll set up corresponding parts, 6 to 9, is equal to 8 to x. Then we cross multiply and I would get that that is 6x is equal to 72. 6 times x is equal to 9 times 8 is 72. Divide both sides by 6 and we get x is equal to 12. So we set up our proportion, cross multiply, that gives us our equation to help us solve for x. Okay, so let's try to set up number 4. We can set up 6 to 9 is equivalent to x to 6. I started with this triangle, so I kept the triangle in my numerator. 6 is to 9 as x is to 6. Then we cross multiply and solve. So 9x is equal to 36. Divide both sides by 9 and x equals 4. <clears throat> so at this point, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and try number five on your own. 
see if you can try number five on your own. Pause right here and try that one. So if we took the opportunity to try number five on your own, we're just going to set up our proportion and solve. So I have that these two sides are corresponding, so 14 is the 7. As, that's, there's my equal sign. So I went 14 to 7, so now I'll do x to 12. We solve. So I'll have 7x is equal to 14 times 12, which is 168. Then we'll divide it by 7, both sides by 7, and we'll get that x is equal to 24. Now for number 6 and number 7, what I like to do is set up my two triangles in their orientation, uh, in the same orientation. So say I'm looking at A, B, C, and the right angle is right here, down at the bottom right hand corner. I want to put my right angle for my EBD triangle in that same place. So we have the right angle right here, we have B, and then if I'm going clockwise around, I have B, then D, and then E, like so. So now I am orientated in the right direction, it's much easier to set up, so I have B to E is 15, and I have e to d is x plus 5. And then I'm going to use abc as my other triangle. So we can say x plus 1 is to x plus 5. As 12 is to 15. This is where we'll want to use our parentheses, so we throw up our parentheses and now we're ready to multi cross multiply, so I have 12 times x plus 5 is equal to 15 times x plus 1, distributing on both sides, 12x plus 60 is equal to 15x plus 15, subtract 15 from both sides, so I have 12x plus 45, 12x plus 45 is equal to 15x, subtract 12x from both sides, we have 45 is equal to 3x, divide by 3 and we get x is equal to 15. Now number seven is a little bit trickier because when I draw my two triangles, I have my bigger triangle and I have my littler triangle, my smaller triangle. So the smaller triangle is not too difficult to see. We can see that that's six and that's x plus two. Here's my UVT triangle. When I'm, draw when I'm setting up my larger triangle, that's the tricky part because of this ST side. So I have my R, S, T. We can see the, the main big triangle. And I know this side's 14. That one's not too difficult. But what is ST equal to? What is the S to T equal to? Well, it's a combination of SV and VT. So ST is really 3X minus 3 plus X plus 2. Because it's both of these lengths added together to create the entire ST. And so when I combine that, I get 4X minus 1. So ST is really equal to 4X minus 1. So now I can set up my proportion, where I can go 14 is to 6, as 4x minus 1 is to x plus 2. Use our parentheses, cross multiply, like that. <clears throat> then we're ready 
ready to solve this equation. So we'll distribute 14x plus 28 is equal to 24x minus 6. I'll subtract 14x from both sides. And we'll have 28 is equal to 10x minus 6. Adding 6, we have 34 is equal to 10x. Divide by 10, and we have x is equal to 34 over 10, which is also 17 over 5. That's how we can use proportional relationships to help us solve for our um, triangles or similar figures. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.